What's up, guys? Will Rodolfi here, Director of Business Development at New. Welcome back to the Disconnect Podcast. Here with Mark Hanschett, CEO and founder uh, of the company. And today we are talking a lot of different things around the EV industry in terms of, um, you know, charging, consolidation, and really talking about bringing big ideas that are really going to change the world um, to life and not necessarily following the crowd. Um, you know, from a te technological perspective or a business perspective, whatever it's going to be. So I um, hope you guys really like this podcast. Tap in with us and here we go. What's that company? Boston Dynamics, Dynamics right? Yeah, the robots. robot company. Mm -hmm. um, there's now like a Chinese company, right? That makes their own robot spot dog yeah. thing or whatever, oh, yeah, like yeah. those guys mm -hmm. do. They'll... But uh, I've always talked about this before. So there is a long-term like sort of use case, right, for Boston Dynamics and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And their shit's cool. Like if you ever, you watch the evolution of like the robot and stuff and what they're doing, all this stuff's really cool. Yep. But I don't know why I had this in my head. It's probably one of the dumber ideas I have, but I think it might actually work. You could actually, if they wanted to, they could recreate, like remember the Jurassic World like yeah. concept? Mm-hmm. Like, why don't they just find a way to build these, like, big Dinosaurs. dinosaur robots with the same technology and recreate, like, the yeah. Jurassic World theme park? And then you can, like... But make it more legit. Make yeah. it more legit. Yeah, yeah. But then you can, like... And then just, like, go beyond that, right? If you want to, like, do the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. It's one way to, like, start to create something that's somewhat chaotic, not pre-programmed. Because let's face it, we don't... Nobody wants to see the animatronic crap that you see now, right? Where yeah. it, like, does simple stuff. You want it to see, like, dynamically interact. Or, like, the small T-Rex that, like, a, obviously there's a person inside of it just, like, walking around. Yeah, yeah. Westworld. Yes. Yeah. Basically Westworld. Yeah. Producer Drew coming in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, I mean, if you think about it, it's like, what are you trying? You're trying to build a revenue stream off of it and you're trying to learn more and like build dynamics off of it and stuff like that. And I know it's not like straight applicable because they're trying to build more, more humanoid stuff. Yeah. But I mean, you could build some really cool entertainment level stuff. West West worldy that like, I think people would really be into and they'd probably be a lot more excited. I think about, about that, that too, from like uh like if they did create a Jurassic world again and like how much that would attract like, families and not only spark the curiosity of like kids to like want to study like prehistoric times and stuff but like what if like outside of like the walking dinosaurs what if you came up with a robotic pterodactyl that actually could flap its wings and fly there's a guy who created a bird long time ago there's probably better versions of it they now, actually have like bird drones now that like actually like yeah they flap their wings they actually yeah. fly Little mini, like little tiny but flaps like, or whatever, but, but yeah. like a massive pterodactyl, like you see in the That'd movies, be cool. where you're be like, scary as whole, shit. Yeah, like, like holy shit, it'd be awesome. That so would there's be nuts. a practical application: one, entertainment; two, scary entertainment. Like it pretty much just works. What every if? Time. What if they warfare styled pterodactyls? <laughs> that would probably scare the shit out of some terrorists, <laughs> dude. That'd be funny. I though. mean, I would scare me. That is the other practical application for it. Though. And it's like, and it's like, like instead of dropping like a missile or something, it's like a little pterodactyl egg, but it's really like a bomb. Oh, God. I know uh, it's a weird way to start a podcast, but. No, you know, no. Like, I, I kind of okay. love it, but like, yeah. You need to create an outtakes video, by the way. No, I mean, you just, yeah, yeah. That'd be so, funny. There's a lot of applications for this stuff. Well, I feel like, so if you watch, there's like that one video out there about Boston Dynamics where they've been around you know, for quite some time where they Long had like, time actually, they yeah. had like that. It's like, they show the, uh, over time, like, okay, they did this thing that did this. And then yeah, it yeah. has like a thing that did this. And then it's like the next year is like did this and it jumps on a box and whatever for the amount of time that they've been around. Granted technological advances over the last 10, 15 years have been quite astronomical. Um, to that point, looking at companies like Tesla who are doing humanoid bots and now figure, as well, I don't, I don't know that one. I actually have to look. Figure that is uh, founded by Brett Adcock, the co-founder of Archer, who left. Oh, okay. And so he spun up his own humanoid team, and now he build robots. Yeah, he already has the prototypes already set, and they're all going to well, be powered by AI, obviously. Yeah, I mean the basic fundamental aspects of how the robot moves, functions, mm -hmm. and stuff. That's actually not that complicated. 
it's the algorithms, the AI driven controls, right. Or, mm-hmm. or whatever it is, actually, those are the more complicated things, mm-hmm. right. That it has to do, but the functions of like a robot moving, come on, we've been doing that for a very, very long time. Yeah. The, the fundamentals of that are not much different. You're going to get to a point of like energy storage, right. And mm-hmm. usage and efficiency and stuff. But for now, you're just trying to get to a point where like, any one of those investments makes sense. You think they'll go pure electric or fuel cell? Like, like, Ooh. like, like, like. I don't so think fuel cell, but. Well, let's go back to the Terminator movies. Because in one of the, term, I think it's Terminator 3. Is it a uh, fuel cell or was it a yeah, little nuclear it's, thing? Yeah, it's a, it's a, he's got two fuel cells within his uh, little GPU center. But he like gets shot by like a. The other Terminator that's like yeah, more it's advanced like than him or whatever. Or something, yeah. yeah, and he's like, oh, I gotta like take the fuel cell out. And he like takes it, throws. Th- yeah, he like throws it out onto the side of the road as they're like driving in the truck, and then like you know, 15 seconds later down the road, it's like a mini little a bomb. You know, well, that's what I mean. I don't yeah. think it'll be. I don't think fuel cell will be the future. Well, they just don't die though. Yeah, yeah but if you're looking at this, is actually cool because when we talk about electrification, when I started this. Mm-hmm. Batteries is a key, right, to electrification, energy storage. It's mm-hmm. a key to, like, what we're talking about in robotics. Everything, yeah. Everything. But the fundamentals of how the, all of this stuff functions is magnetism, electricity, right, and whatever mm-hmm. it is. So however that is, uh, sh- like, generated and stored, it doesn't necessarily dictate or change the application. So no. a car will move, right, a plane will fly, mm-hmm. a robot will function right potentially kill people potentially kill people um hope not but yeah we hope not. we don't want but, a robot um well it depends if it's learning from society i would argue we're going downhill pretty fast right now um but in in all of those cases though the fundamental functionality is still electricity causing mechanical motion mm-hmm. right yep. like that's how it all is yep. Or, or electrical, electric, circuits, electrical yeah. circuits, right? Doing processing and movements yeah, and, and all that, that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's all fundamentally built on a, a very mm-hmm. basic principle. Yep. Um, so when we think about the future of this stuff and like where it goes, I think battery tech is going to be around for a hundred years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that fuel cells, they have a purpose because hydrogen is the most abundant like element that we're that we aware have. of. In the entire universe. As of right now. Yeah, yeah. Until the aliens bring something different. Hence, we're aware of, yes. right? Yeah. So, um, but I don't think fuel cells are useful in, like, what we're talking about in the transportation space or anything like that. I think that's actually not necessarily the direction to go. Controversial bomb for all you hydrogen freaks. Right. Um, hydrogen's or valuable for making water. Sorry. Love you guys. What? Hydrogen. Yeah. yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's super Course. valuable in yeah. that aspect. Mm-hmm. Um, for life. Uh, but um, fission, like, you know, mm-hmm. I think you're going to see stuff in that space, right? Fusion, right? You're yeah, going to see stuff n- in that nuclear space. Nuclear fission is it's, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry. I mean, fission exists today, but like, um, you know. So you think it'll be like a tandem between like nuclear fission, fusion, and electric? I don't think, it, and, I don't think, the, I, I don't think the way we do it today is realistic. Mm. Or, um, or at least sustainable. It's yeah, it's not like the the biggest um, almost one hundred percent of people get it wrong mm-hmm. when they think it like lasts forever. No, they replace the rods every like four to six years. I was gonna right? say because like uh, in submarines, like they say like oh it's been running on a nuclear. It's that's, nuclear. That's powered. a different application though. Like that that one can last longer. Yeah. Right. Well, it's also but because like it's yeah moving through water and it, it, it's a, yeah it's a whole different a whole different like thing. thing. Yeah, yeah, but. Um, when we look at it, I mean, is it going to be necessary? I think there's a form of it that will be necessary. Mm-hmm. Um, but going back to it, like uh, what people get wrong about nuclear power is that you replace the rods every four to six years. It is not forever. And that waste has to be dealt with. So yeah. I don't, I think just from that yeah. perspective, I don't think to. until we figure out a way to use it, right? I don't think it's a long-term viable solution. And you're also... It goes back to, I'm using um, basically a fundamental physics-based behavior, right, to 
boil water to then turn that mechanical energy to like turn a turbine to then generate electric. Like that's just dumb. Yeah. It's like, right? it's like, like way too many redundant processes. It's to get too to the point. many steps. Yeah. I, I don't want to call it dumb, but it's like, it's too many steps. It's almost redundant steps and not redundant, but you're, like you're converting yeah. energy to different forms of energy. It's not the fastest point right. from a to B. It's more like a to a one, a four, a right. seven. And you finally get to B. Yeah. So the efficiency hits and everything are bad. Um, like fusion power uh, in the future, I think there's an application there. It'll have to become much smaller. Mm. All that stuff's going to get small, right? And then it's going to become much more dense, right? And much more powerful. We've probably got about 100 years or so. And that, that curve's not going to be linear, right? It's going to be exponential. But then fundamentally, what you're doing on the other side of it, right, is always going to be the same. It's just going to get more efficient or there's mm-hmm. going to be something cool or some new invention there Some that, that happens. Yeah. Stuff. yeah. 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 Um, so I think like, as we look to the future, it's important to keep all of that in mind and not focus on how things are today, but like what steps are we taking to get mm-hmm. there? And that, that rounds out to our whole thing, right? Where we talk about energy eventually becoming abundant, mm-hmm. accessible, right? And, you know, available, like it's going to, the cost of energy is just going to go to zero. Well, close to zero. Um, and as it approaches zero, then you're eliminating one of the largest conflict drivers in the world. Yeah. Energy, right? of course. Number two is religion. Yep. Which, we won't touch uh, on that, but I, I can. Right now, it's obviously right a big, now is a big, big issue. Big topic, we right? We know why. Um, yes, yes. And, uh, there is a solution for that, but we'll save that for a different podcast. Um, but I think like as we think about that, and as we talk through these mm-hmm. things and there's these AI companies that are, that are starting and a lot of them are starting to collapse already. Mm-hmm. There was an article published, I think I shared it yesterday about how chat GPT added a feature mm-hmm. to upload word or uh, Adobe documents. Right. Mm-hmm. And you can ask it questions about it and like does something with it. They there's like a number of startups that basically their valuation just went to an immediate zero. Yeah, because they were doing that. The moment it happened. Yeah. 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 So fundamentally core technology, mm-hmm. you have to own, own yep. the base core technology. Mm-hmm. Right. Or the fundamental thing that's like driving differentiation. The end product and differentiation. Yeah. 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 Hang it. Cut Drew. Oh. Excuse me. Back at it. Uh, at it. Yeah, they also just announced a bunch of other things yesterday too. OpenAI did. Mm-hmm. I forget who the main investor guy is, but or he's like the well, CEO. it's Microsoft. But the, you're talking about the CEO. Yeah, the one guy, uh, Altman. Yeah. Um, yeah, they just announced a couple other things that they just added in. Like you can create as like a company, so you have your own web page. You can create your own GPT for your web page. Oh yeah, yeah. they're with doing like a an bunch AI of assistant. like API plugins. But the problem is, you're going to get a bunch of these like rapper scam startups out there. Yep. And I think. <laughs> That hits close to home because what we've seen in our space is a bunch of rapper scam startups or just like get rich. I'm going to like build electrification and like do this thing. Yeah. And I'm going to make a bunch of money and Strike we're starting. iron while it's hot kind right. of situation. And we're starting to see the collapse. Yeah. And with that, I mean, collapse also means consolidation. Yeah. So... What do you see? I mean, from a percentage perspective, we don't necessarily have to go off names. We know who the players are that are likely going to consolidate. We see it. We don't have to talk about their names. But percentage-wise, in the EV industry, what do you think the consolidation percentage is going to be across well, so the I think industry? Because there's, there's obviously also different segments. So you could say, especially based off of the information that dropped this week with Rivian's van becoming commercially available outside of Amazon now, there's a lot of players in that market that a it's, dozen, it, two dozen players. Yeah, that yeah. it's gonna be tough for them to keep up because Rivian has a proven product in market now, and well, they have a better product. They have than a better product and a proven product. Yeah, yeah. Most of their most of the other products in the market are either getting thrown out and then bringing back from customers because they need to redo something or whatever it might be. Well, okay, so I think um, they're sort of like the best of today, but not necessarily what's necessary for mm-hmm. tomorrow. And I, I would argue they have the best of today. Yeah. Um, but uh, if you think about this ecosystem uh, and we want to talk about consolidation, um, there are there's sort of two plays that are made, mm-hmm. right? Um, and Rivian kind of 
plays they played on I'll call it the right side is integration. Mm-hmm. Right? Like I'm just gonna like take a bunch of off the shelf stuff, I'm gonna build something that's super expensive and then figure, ship it. Figure it out, yeah. On the far left side is I'm going to invent everything, right? And, and own, own the tech. Own the tech, right? Mm-hmm. Leaning to the left side or my left, mm-hmm. you're seeing greater success. Yep. Right. Go and on. that's why we lean to the left, mm-hmm. right? Like we knew very early on. You have to own charging. You have to own battery tech. You've got to own the vehicle experience. You, it's all mm-hmm. tied together, right? Yep. And energy is a foundational piece of all yep. of that. Mm-hmm. On the right-hand side, you have a number of startups, right, that try to play in the space, but they try to do it the cheap and easy way, which is I'm going to integrate a bunch of parts and everything else. But their price point, I wish my right hand worked, um, their price point is so okay. high, right, that you have a player like Rivian that comes in, and their price point's what, 80, call it 86K average, mm-hmm. right? Um, in a market segment with competitive features, dedicated vehicle, designed for a purpose. Um, it, I mean, everybody else that's coming, if you're coming in with a $150,000 vehicle, you're fucked. Yeah, you really are. Like you're, you're fucked. Like, mm-hmm. it, there's no comparison there. With 100 miles on your range, too. Like, right. who, who wants that? So, so you have Pay all more these... more for less? Right. Yeah, right. Ugh. So, you... Um, who likes that? So you have like two dozen companies, a few of them that are public, that are in that far right space. Mm-hmm. So in the next year, um, you're going to see massive consolidation, consolidation, or just poof, poof. I think you're going to see a lot more poof than consolidation. Why do you think that? Do you think just because there will be management teams that don't want to work or consolidate with others? What value do they bring? <coughs> So you have to think about it from that perspective. They have a product in market, but you have to be competitive, right? And differentiated. And differentiated. If you can't bring anything in that space to market, right? If, you're, if you can't stand out in a crowd and actually be like truly successful, poof. So I wish I could take this mic and just like drop it, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, it, you and I are very close to this, right? Yeah. We've been doing mm-hmm. this for a long time. Um, I would say the consolidation piece is going to be they have to have cash assets, facilities, um, physical assets, right, of value. And IP of value. And IP of value, mm-hmm. right? And those are going to be the ones that look to consolidate. Yep. That's a very big strategy for us, mm-hmm. right? We're looking at who is out there that has something that fits in those categories or all of those categories, right? Mm-hmm. And is it something that we can build upon, mm-hmm. right? Sort of consolidate, re, um, repurpose, right? And then build upon and then mm-hmm. come out there. Because, you you know, you want Rivian to be successful. Yeah. Because if they're not successful, and right now the OEMs are struggling for success, and I think the OEMs are far right. They're yeah. not left, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Um, they're integrators. They are not technology companies. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're losing existential amounts of money on every single EV. Well, yeah, yeah. Make. I was going to get to that too, oh, yeah. right? It's like, so the other side of it is you have to be profitable at 15,000 vehicles a year. Yeah. If you're not profitable at 15,000 vehicles per year, you have a problem with your business, right? Yeah, big yikes. Yeah. So, so you're going to start seeing consolidation there, but... What we're also going to see is you have a lot of these like companies that were, they're trying to jump on the battery bandwagon, but they don't really have any differentiating technology, right? Mm-hmm. So you're coming to market with something that's identical to what CATL, LG Chem, Panasonic, right? SK, SK on, yeah. um, and all those guys have. Mm-hmm. Stop. Well, yeah, it's like what we saw with British Volt, right? Yeah, yeah. Just, just stop Yep. right now. Pure and if you're an investor... Done. Look, like, don't follow the market trends. Look for a company that's thinking differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Don't look for a company that's saying, oh, we're going to, like, bring LFP to the U.S. And that's fucking easy. Yeah. Right? Like, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, You know, look for a company that, or look for companies that are thinking completely different in terms of how they apply technology. Mm -hmm. Because you're safe, you're considered safe investment in terms of, like, Oh, they're de-risking it because all this stuff's invented and they're just putting it together and shoving it out. Or they're de-risking it because they're just building something that there's high demand for and they're somehow going to meet that demand. No, they're not. Yeah. Right? Their their price point has to be a certain point. Well, yeah. 
and it's like you could even consider that uh, like with like Lucid. Like no, nothing against Lucid. It's a great product what they have going. But when you're losing half a million dollars a vehicle. So, yeah, what we've yeah, said this before, right? Like, I think Lucid, from an engineering perspective, there are some genius level implementations. Oh, there, definitely. Right? We're, yeah. But, yeah. Half, Big car. Uh, 440-ish thousand dollars per vehicle loss. Yeah, almost half a million. Yeah, it's you like can't, it's like that's not sustainable in any way, shape, no, or form. Now, granted, they're not 15,000 vehicles per year. No, they're they cut to, back to, what, 8,000? Yeah, but to go from there to there... You're not going to get there. Now, the last thing is mass market adoption, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, vehicles are priced too high. I told you I was looking at yep. a truck earlier today. Yep. $105,000. For a diesel truck. For a diesel truck. Way outside the, the like, where the market can sustain yeah. from a price standpoint. So, um, but anyways, we talk about, the last one's going to be uh, charging and infrastructure, right? And things like that. Mm -hmm. So, right now, you've got a bunch of, uh, you've got a shit half a million people out there that are like, I'm going to make a connection. I'm going to like go grab some money. I'm going to like do this thing. And I'm mm -hmm. going to like charging is a hot thing right now. I can make like 5 million bucks off this. Right. And that's all they're really looking to do. Yeah. Right. So you've got a, a lot of people like that mm -hmm. and they see the big dollar signs and everything else from the DOE and all that yeah. stuff. And our, the, the Nevi funds and like, Oh yeah, we're going to go do it. That's not how it works. It's, yeah, it's not how it works. And you're not going to survive on government funds. <laughs> right. So in the charging space, you're going to see a lot of death there as mm -hmm. well. You're also going to see that companies who were well funded, but were not strategic in their deployments and they were not intelligent in their deployments and how they focused on building out the industry. They focused on making a quick buck. Mm -hmm. By selling they didn't, hardware. By selling hardware. And that's it. Didn't pay attention to where the hardware was going. Mm -hmm. They followed the like the crowd. Mm -hmm. They they are going to die. Because now they have to start over. Die or get like kind of rolled into some other or company. rolled into some other company. So yeah. that's where you're going to see kind of like Volta with shell, right. Mm -hmm. And stuff like that. You'll see some yeah, of those. It's almost like Volta. Like, it's not even Volta anymore. It's just shell recharge. Right. I, guess I think so. I, mean, I don't know. Part of I think the shell recharge. They probably still say Volta. Probably, on so, them, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still a Volta entity, but it's like, you're yeah. just part of shell recharge and their entire like strategy on that. Right. Team. So, um, so I mean, like from our standpoint, we're very much so focused on the consolidation mm -hmm. side. We're very much so looking at, okay, Companies A, B, C, D, and E, right? They have a piece here, piece here, piece here, right? How can we best leverage that? I think that's what you're going to see there is you're going to see pieces of companies of value, right? And you're going to see those get bought up and transitioned and sort of moved over. Um, I think that China is kicking the U.S.'s ass yep. from a they technology are. like speed standpoint Look and at implementation how fast BYD standpoint. is going. Right. Not just BYD. There's a whole host oh, of oh, yeah. other yeah. OEMs over there. Yeah. Now, of the 500, there's, I don't know, 100 left. But um, I'd say there's 10 over there that are just absolutely spanking. They're monsters. Spanking ass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so here in the U.S., I think it needs to, you know, if you look at it, if you're, if you're being smart about this, what I would say is right now the economy is tough. Ugh. Interest rates are fucking high. Oh. Um, investors are – they're Tough they're, market. They're actually, they're trying to like hoard cash, right? You're seeing that with uh, mm -hmm. uh, Buffett um, and, and Berkshire and all those guys. Mm -hmm. um, but if you really want to survive and come out of this thing on top, don't follow the crowd. It's, it's time to start like looking at different things. It's time to start looking at companies that are thinking differently. Mm -hmm. um, they're not trying to be the next Tesla. They're thinking bigger than that, right? Yeah. They're thinking beyond that. They have a completely different approach because guess what? The approach, the message that everybody has said, it failed. I'm yeah. sorry, but it uh, failed. Yeah, exactly. And to that point, I mean, following the crowd with like one of the latest announcements over the last week, uh, you know, probably against the grain and against the deep rooted, uh, I won't call it hate, but I will say disdain that the CEO and founder of Lucid has. You're talking about Tesla? Uh, I'm talking and about Lucid? Peter, yeah. Mr. Peter Rawlinson yeah. and his disdain for Elon. Jumped on the bandwagon for NACS. I mean, I I kind of understand it, but at the same time, with how much they have backing wise from the 
I'm going to say it. There's trillionaires over there in Saudi Arabia in the PIF. We they, think so. We don't oh, know. They, yeah, oh, yeah. they, that one guy's got like an $800 million home. Something yeah, like yeah, 400 yeah, million. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, like they have the ability to go do something bigger and better, but they decided to jump onto the bandwagon. Like everyone else following the crowd, right? Yeah. Why do you think that is? I mean, we why do you think we adopted did? NACS? We too did too. So for, yeah. don't hate on us guys, but that's also because I mean, we're offering can, a charging solution that do. everyone can use. <laughs> yeah, but why do you think he's succumbed to that pressure? I think uh, if you're if you're the only holdout, and everybody else is going to NACS, people are like laughing at you and pointing at you. No, and being like, I why? think um, I think he was. Outside looking in, right? So I'm just mm-hmm. like guessing the thought process here. Mm-hmm. Could be completely. These are assumptions, wrong. Peter. Don't hate us. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I was thinking about what has happened in the last year or so, Lucid has a 900 plus volt architecture. Mm-hmm. Tesla's current charging infrastructure does not support that at oh, all. No. Nope. Um, the V4, nope. in some instances, does, and some it doesn't. Yep. Um, which is kind of weird, it's right? Weird. It's. I mean, it's just the way they're doing it, but. Uh, the OS system there has got to be doing something right. wonky. So I, if I'm in Lucid shoes and anybody else's shoes, and we, uh, and I'm looking at the industry and the pullback today, mm-hmm. here's one reason for the pullback that I don't think anybody wants to talk about. They want to talk about a lack of EV demand. Oh no, that's but there. They, it's there and it's growing, mm-hmm. right? Like it's all bullshit if you think it's pulling back. Yeah, I think OEMs failed. Yep. Right, but also. Um, I think it's, you You just came out, you shipped a bunch of product. For the next 12 months, you're going to ship similar product to that, mm-hmm. right? And then you came out and said, one of the critical pieces of that is going to change in the one that we're shipping right now and for the foreseeable future for the next 12 months, it's going to be obsolete. Yeah, it doesn't have it. It's going to, yeah, exactly. It's going like, to be. You're, you're basically telling the entire market, don't buy my product right now. Wait till I fix this thing. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, if you buy it today, you're going to have a bad time. Well, not only, yeah, not only that, but it's like also like, oh, if you don't buy it today, you're going to miss out. Like not to the lucid situation, but just say any sort of commercial vehicle like, oh, then you're going to miss out on these incentives. because, Which, which by uh, the way, no commercial customer has moved to NACS. Yeah. Which, right. I wouldn't. But no. yeah. Um, but yeah, like. The, the concept around like mandates and like pushing, like I understand the reason for it. And Government the want mandates to do it. are that, I, oh. I'll stand by that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, it's just like the, the concept, like, especially because I'm, I've said this many times, we're in this like infant stage of EVs. Um, and someone will argue like, oh, EVs have been around since the 1920s. You need it's like, dude, innovation. no, it's like, yeah, you need yeah, yeah. continued integration and you can't force people's hand if, they don't have uh, to this situation of like, oh, your product's going to be obsolete in a year or two. Right. It's like, why am I going to go then invest in this just to g- grab a quick buck from the government on an incentive piece? Sure, I understand it from a business perspective, but if it's doing you a disservice from a business or from a customer experience facing perspective, that makes no sense. No, but I think what you're seeing right now, though, is a correction yeah. in the market, mm-hmm. right? What you're seeing is. Um, or what we're seeing is uh, a solution existed, pride, right, mm-hmm. and ego prevented ego. a large swath of the industry, right, from, like, accepting the truth. Mm-hmm. Ego and, and, then, and, like, money grabbing. Right. And then all of a sudden they realize, oh, okay, well, like, this actually has to happen. Mm-hmm. And then now what you're seeing is you have these societies like Char and, and all this stuff, right? I don't know the benefit of those groups anymore, when, which is one of the reasons why we left, right, yeah. is, like, now CCS is, like, as a handle or whatever, is more or less dead. Mm-hmm. They, uh, the ISO team or whatever, right, is trying to standardize the, the NACS, SAE, yeah, SAE, SAE and team, all those guys. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. they're trying to standardize uh, NACS. And that's great. But um, remember that. Uh, restrictions and mandates and um, specifications that are rigid, they eliminate innovation, Mm -hmm. right? They very much so like prevent you from trying to do the next thing that could be great and amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And there will always be winners and losers when that happens. It's important that it happens, but there's always going to be winners and losers. Look at USB. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. I mean, lightning's going away. All lightning chargers for iPhones. But it doesn't matter because yeah. for the longest time, that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And people right. loved it. Yeah. And now the the a solution that's viable, that's universal, it works, right? For is everything. There. Yeah. For so everything. So and it believe it or not, it would not have existed if you didn't have the lightning connector. It would not have existed if you didn't yeah. have other stuff. It's a so, stepping stone for sure. Yeah. So when we look at like charging and infrastructure and mm-hmm. all that stuff, um I think CCS, what you're seeing is a correction mm-hmm. away from that back to something that technically was just better at some point. Mm-hmm. Right. Um now we're not done because the next thing is going to be megawatt. The next thing is going to be whatever the next, you know, big thing Multi- is. Yeah, multi-megawatt. So kind of going back to our conversation, though, when we think about consolidation and we think about where things are yep. going, you have a lot of customers that can't actually adopt NACS either. Mm-hmm. So you have, like, all these startups and this all these, weird, like, integration companies yeah, and buffer, stuff. Yeah, area they can't actually they can't. adopt NACS. Yeah. So, again, you're going to see those shrink some IP consolidation, mm-hmm. they'll be bought for, for pennies lower prices, dollar, yeah. pennies on the dollar, right? Pull that across, integrate that. I don't, so there's a comment made, you'll never find another Elon again. And I don't think anybody should ever strive to be the next Elon. I don't think you should strive to be, there's also the comment of like, no one's ever going to be the next Steve Jobs. It's like, no fucking shit. Yeah. Right? Like, don't, <laughs> you know, like, don't try to, to do that. Don't strive to do that. But I will say that um, there is a lot of opportunity. There is a lot of growth out there. No one has cracked the nut yet. Nope. Um, We are still in the early adopter phase. Mm -hmm. Infancy. So we're, we're in what's called early majority. Actually, we're not even at adolescence yet. Right. So there is so much to do yet. It is just getting started. Tip of the iceberg. Um, and you're starting to see like that mindset go away from, you know, oh, I come from legacy. I know what's what. No, you don't. And what you're seeing is you're starting to see that die. Yeah. No offense to all like the Tesla people and stuff like that, but seeing X Tesla all the time on just titles, like on your, it's not valuable anymore. Your first thing. I'm just like, unless you were there in the first like five years, it's really not. Yeah. I I was going to say up till like maybe 2015. Yeah. No, don't get me wrong. Like Tesla's still doing a bunch of, some really cool awesome stuff. stuff. Yeah. Don't um, mean, yeah. Great company, but killer, killer products. But I sure. think like if I look, I mean, I'm, I'm biased, obviously. Um, there are still so many things that are done with a very legacy mindset. Mm-hmm. There's cost reductions that can be had, right? There are future things related to like battery technology. You and I were talking about, um, this like wing battery thing the other day, right? Yeah, like for aviation. Yeah. For aviation. I mean, it, right now everyone is still thinking within the box of integration mm-hmm. and real innovation is still coming. Yeah. Um, you get it rid of the legacy right. OEM mindsets. Now in the charging and infrastructure side, um, there's the, the one thing I love about what we're doing is that, we're not following the crowd, yeah. We're not which just, is which yeah. is basically like we're not paying attention to what everybody else is doing, and then saying, "Oh, they're deploying here, so we should like go deploy there too, right, and like try door. to, yeah. yeah, yeah, don't do that. Set up and wave. Yeah, hey yeah, guys, yeah, come great, over here. Great mission we're on here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we yeah. are all in this mission together, but like at the same time, it's now focus on where there's gaps, right? Yeah. Focus on where things are there, mm-hmm. and that's what I love about what we're doing. We're focused on not just charging, but like where are the gaps beyond the plug, right? It's like Mm -hmm. sort of the plug is one piece. Where's the gap beyond the plug and Mm -hmm. how do we solve that? Yep. Um, What are the two different approaches, right? And things like that. Uh, But over the next, I'm going to say 12, 18 months, what we're going to see is we're going to see companies that don't have that mindset, Mm -hmm. that don't have this like kind of let's not do what, the industry standard status quo languages. Um, you're going to see companies that follow the those like sort of historical practices. You're going to see them die. You're going to see innovation, thought leadership, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
you're going to see those companies survive. That's mm-hmm. why I'm a firm believer that new is going to survive because we don't we don't look at anything and say, oh, well, this is the way it's done, and therefore we can only succeed if we do this. Um, what I love about, like, especially some of your posts lately, is it goes, like, you ever notice, like, you somebody makes a comment. Remember when Kyle started the whole rate my charge thing and he started mm-hmm. talking about Kyle, uh, Kyle was, Connor. Connor from Out of Spec. Shout, out, Ky- shout yeah, out Kyle yeah. Connor, Out of Spec. We love you. So when he started Dude. doing his reviews of like charging an infrastructure, then all of a sudden, every other YouTube blogger started doing that. And they kept saying the same thing. Mm-hmm. And then now every media post, blog post, every influencer or following. pseudo influencer is like, you know, oh, this is the topic. This is what we have to solve. Hang on. It's almost like a... <laughs> Cut that, Drew. Uh, <laughs> it's what we have to like resolve, and then like so. What you're seeing is like it's the FOMO side, yeah, right. Where it's like everybody's talking about this. If I don't say something, I'm not in the in crowd. I'm not a thought leader. Mm-hmm. No, 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 that's not how you're a thought leader. You're a thought leader by coming up with something that nobody's fucking talking about, yep. right? And then go from there. Mm-hmm. Now, I again, I biasly think we're a thought leader because when we started, if you go all the way back to 2018. Or like pull through like amenities, you know, it's got a charging, megawatt charging, heavy like duty trucks, heavy duty trucks miles, like you have to hit that bigger market. So 35,000 pounds. Right. I mean, just think of all the people that like, I mean, yeah, okay, we're not making the trucks and we push back on battery and we're focusing on the infrastructure. But like, I mean, we saw how much people wanted or want that product because they yeah. know that that's what yeah. is needed. So that's what I'm excited about is that while everybody else is over here like screaming about mm-hmm. this stuff, you know, if if you're an investor, if you're a, if you think you're a thought leader, if you're looking to the future, AI has already reached saturation currently. Um, like, just it is like there's so much dumb money being pumped into that. You're you're going to see another hundred billion dollars written off as a loss. Um, I would look at like I would look at people that are not like screaming about what you know everybody else has been screaming about mm-hmm. for the last couple of days. Yeah. I'd look at the person or the company or the organization that's talking about what's next. Yeah. Fut- future forward looking rather than talking about meeting today's man's today's demands rather than what's tomorrow mm-hmm. and what is truly going to be needed for the future because the future is what matters. Today's already Today's and already here. Shoot, it's already 350. The day's pretty much done. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, so, yeah, I'm totally with you on that. And, I mean, to the point of, like, LinkedIn posts, like, a lot of times, like, that's what I'm, like, trying to, like, get people riled up about is, like... Just say what you think. Yeah. I think that's another issue, too. People don't like uh, going against the grain. Well, you I mean, in terms of, in terms of speaking, you know, walking that, that tightrope of, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always walk the tightrope. I, I mean, I always think to myself, if I'm ever going to go out there and say something yeah. c- controversial is like, how much, how much of a, uh, of a pot am I going to stir here? And I can't wait to see what the comments are going to be. You know, the worst thing that you could do is be wrong. Yeah. And, and then if, uh, if so, I'll go in the comments and say, I'm wrong. Thanks. Yeah. Just turn around Thanks. and be like, oh, fucked up. Yeah. Right, Drew? Th- yeah. <laughs> I think if we had more leadership in yeah. in this space that actually came out and did say that, I think there'd be a little bit more forward innovation. Like honestly, like Valid. yeah, like I really a hundred percent believe that because I mean, if you look at everything from the SPAC boom to now and how much crap and consolidation has happened and all the companies that have fizzled. And, you know, all the technology that was supposedly the next generation of changing mobility and whatever that was not actually real. Well, okay. I'll tell you one. If somebody has pedigree, if they have Tesla, Google, GM, Ford, Rivian, and their background or title, don't bet on it. Because it's highly unlikely that that individual is truly going to create success and... The other thing I will say is in the charging space, because that's the one that's most prevalent today, for everybody listening, the truck is coming, the battery tech is coming. Making a comeback. Okay, but in the charging space, I have seen a 
number of startups that are like, oh, we're building, a- I think you sent me one earlier today. We're building like APIs, mm-hmm. for charging integration. We're building the backend software to monitor health and all of that stuff, mm-hmm. right? Um, we're building uh, some other software piece to like connect this to like something else. I can tell you that in that business, it's cutthroat, mm-hmm. right? So yep. the foundational technology is going to be the software that is built, but it's the hardware that it runs on and it's the main operating system for that. Mm-hmm. So if you're building a piece of that and you think you're going to license that and make a billion dollars a year off of it, Ooh, you're no. full of shit Mm-mm. because any company writing software today can write that application, can write that feature and essentially push you out of the market from yep. a necessity standpoint. Mm-hmm. You're seeing that in AI today. So take that as like a roadmap, mm-hmm. right? Take that as like a picture of your long-term success. So from our standpoint, right, the way I look at it is we're building the foundational mm-hmm. base stuff. Building the foundation of the home. Because yeah. everything else can be built on top of that. And when you're looking at revenue and you're looking at profitability in this space, the companies that do a lot of integration, their cost is going to be so, so high. So much higher, yeah. They are not going to be able to be profitable and succeed. Yeah. And if you're starting a company, it's like starting a BMS company. Don't. Um, if you're starting a company and you're looking at that, like your company is probably only worth the amount of time and effort that you put in from a labor perspective. Build it, sell it fast, and move on. And move on, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes, I mean, that's a hundred percent what makes the most sense. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're going to do that then do it and and then get out of there, right. You know, make your buck, make your buck and go. But like, again, if you don't even have any differentiated technology, just remember, can somebody like whatever you're looking at, can somebody else build this and do they already have the foundational pieces to build it better? Mm -hmm. All right. So, So I did a lot of talking, man. I'm sorry. It's okay. That was, <laughs> I think I, I think we got a lot of really good uh, really good talking points in this one. I think this will probably generate some solid buzz. And you know, uh, for anybody who did listen to this episode, like seriously, we want to hear the comments, whether it's on social media or on YouTube. Um, we want to engage with you guys and you know really hear it because we realize we're not like other people uh, in, in this space, and we're doing things a little bit differently. Um, and we're here to challenge the status quo. That's what, that's why we come to work every single day here at new, um, because we know what the market needs, what the market wants, but also we're trying to push the boundaries of truly what's possible. Um, so that's why we work here, right? I mean, we're trying to change humanity for the better. We've got Um, a mission. Yeah, exactly. So thanks for, uh, stopping by guys. Uh, like I said, drop a comment in the comments, let us know what you think and, uh, stay tuned for more.